I'm Stu Eisenstadt. I'm honorary chairman of the March of the Living. I very much wish I could be with you in person, but appreciate the privilege of addressing you in this way at this very important symposium, which occurs on the 80th anniversary of the adoption of the infamous Nuremberg Laws and the 70th anniversary of the famous Nuremberg Trials. This symposium is particularly important now because it comes at a time of Holocaust denial by some, Holocaust minimization by others, and Holocaust ignorance by still more who simply don't know the history. I'm very pleased that my dear friend and inspiration, Elie Wiesel, is the honorary chair of this symposium, that my uh, dear friend, former Canadian Justice Minister Erwin Kotler, and my former Harvard Law School professor and longtime friend, Alan Dershowitz, are chairs of this symposium. I also would like to thank Richard Heidemann, who is the overall program chair, Shmuel Rosenman, who is the chairman of the board of the March of the Living, and Phyllis Heidemann, who is the president of the March of the Living. The <clears throat> There are a number of important ways in which we can honor the six million who died in the Holocaust and the 500,000 survivors who are still thankfully with us. The first is to assure that in their declining years, Survivors are treated with dignity. And this is a real problem because over 80% of survivors in Central and Eastern Europe and in the former Soviet Union live in or near poverty. Some 30% in the Jewish state of Israel some 25% in the United States, and according to a very recent survey by UJA Federation of New York, of the 60,000 survivors in New York City, fully half are either in poverty or within 50% of the federal poverty level. These figures are just unacceptable for people who suffered so greatly in their youth. And I've devoted a substantial part of my career, both in the Clinton administration as special advisor to the President and Secretary of State in negotiating some $8 billion of recovery from Swiss banks, German and Austrian slave labor companies, European insurers, the return of property and art. And now, as special advisor to Secretary of State Clinton, and most recently to Secretary of State Kerry in negotiating agreements with Lithuania and France, and as the head of the negotiating team of the Jewish Claims Conference, where we've negotiated over a billion and a half dollars of new payments since 2009 when I began heading the negotiating team with Germany primarily for home care, so that those particularly in Central and Eastern Europe in the former Soviet Union, but also in the United States, can avoid being put into old age homes and can get home care workers who provide socialization services, help them with medications and food, and transportation to physicians. A second way in which we can honor uh, those who survive and those who perished is to combat modern day anti Semitism. It is clearly on the rise in significant countries in Europe. In its rawest form, 
It's seen in things like the attack on the Jewish Museum in Brussels and the attack on the Kosher Mart in Paris and the 2012 terrorist attack in Toulouse against the Jewish Day School. And it's more broadly seen in the terrorist attacks which have hit Brussels, Paris, Malmo, Sweden, and other parts of Europe, not just against Jews, but against non-Jews as well. There is a particularly pernicious aspect of this modern-day anti-Semitism, which we call BDS, Boycott, Divestment, and Sanction, against companies that do business with Israel, both American and other companies, and have any relationship to the West Bank. There are labeling requirements being put on West Bank products by the European Union. The European Union's own massive R&D program, for which Israel is the third largest recipient and the largest outside of the EU, uh, was restricted so that any institution which has any connection with the Palestinian territories does not qualify. The BDS movement is also seen on college campuses in virulent form. And it really is nothing more or less than an effort to delegitimize Israel as the state of the Jewish people. It would be so tragic and ironic that 70 years after the liberation of the death camps, to see this kind of new anti-Semitism rear its ugly head. Another way of assuring that we honor the memory of those who died and of those who are still living is to assure that in our own diaspora communities that we fight assimilation and disappearance, a lack of identification at the very time when we have the full opportunity of integrating into our Western societies. Yet again, another way of honoring the memory of those who died and those who survive and making sure that those who survive know that we're thinking of them is to strengthen the state of Israel itself against external attacks. We see the knifings that are occurring we know the potential nuclear threat from Iran. And thankfully, the United States is a key ally of the state of Israel in protecting itself against threats from Hezbollah, from Iran, from Hamas, and from other radicals. But I'd like to suggest to you, and this ties in directly to the seminar that's occurring now, how important this seminar is. And I want to congratulate and underscore the importance of the co-sponsorship of Hegelian University in Krakow. It is a tremendously important thing to have this great university as a co-sponsor of this important symposium with the March of the Living. And I want to congratulate the faculty and the president and others from Hegelian University for their sponsorship of this symposium. Now, the March of the Living fulfills what I consider perhaps the penultimate way of honoring the memory of the survivors and those who uh, perished. And that is through memory, through education, through bringing the lessons of the Holocaust to us today. Not only looking back, but looking forward at what lessons it provides. The March of the Living will, the day after this symposium, be bringing another 12,000 young people from 40 countries 
over the last 20 some years, over three, 200,000 young people from 40 countries have gone on the March of the Living from Auschwitz to Birkenau. That 3.2 kilometer death march. This is tremendously important in un reinforcing for a younger generation what happened in the Holocaust, why it's important to remember it, embedding it into their collective memories as their young people so that it stays with them throughout their lives. The March of the Living, I'm proud to say, not only sponsors the march, and is sponsoring this symposium, but also provides other conferences, symposia, and forums to teach the world the lessons of the Holocaust. This symposium today on Nuremberg, from hate to justice, is another example of what the March of the Living is doing. I want to congratulate again the March of the Living and Hegelian University to thank Alan Dershowitz and Erwin Kotler and Elie Wiesel, Richard Schmuel and Phyllis for their work. I know this will be a very important symposium. Again, I regret not being with you personally, but believe me, I feel that more than virtually, I'm with you. This has been a very important part of my entire life. And I look forward to getting a full report of what I know will be an exceptionally rich and important conference. As much, again, as I've tried to do to provide compensation to survivors, the most important thing is going to be, in the long run, not money, which is ephemeral, but memory, which is eternal. And that's what this symposium is going to do today. Thank you for permitting me to address you in this way.